Holmes, created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles Sheriff's Office calling on all cards, attention all cards, broadcast 297 regarding a murder. Assist the officer to board the Joanna Smith gambling ship off Long Beach. That's all. Rose and Chris. improved over those of yesterday. But still, there is a difference. All-purpose Rio Grande crack is one of those different gasolines. Ordinary gasoline contains only three ingredients, while the new all-purpose Rio Grande crack contains six ingredients expertly blended. These six are crack, poly, straight run, casing head, stabilizer, and tetraethyl. These terms may mean little to you, but to a petroleum engineer and to your motor, they mean more power, more mileage, smoother performance, and more speed. These are the qualifications specified by the drivers of police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment. In other words, our engineers have tailored our gasoline to conform to the demands of these exacting buyers of gasoline. And I assure you that when you purchase your gasoline from the red and white Rio Grande station, you get the same gasoline which is used in this important automotive equipment. Try this new all-purpose gasoline just once, and you will then know why it is the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. Try to answer me, fella. 
Who shot you? Hey, Kinsley, is that you? Yes, sir. It's me, all right, Captain. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Well, this fellow's been shot by somebody. Looks like he's hurt pretty bad. Did you just find him? Yes, sir. I heard the shots down in the boiler room and came up to find out what was going on. He's still alive, that's a cinch. Yes. I'll see if there's a doctor on board. Hold up your van a minute, Phil. I want to make an announcement to the people here in the casino. Certainly, Captain. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll only interrupt you a second. I want to find out if there's a doctor here. A man's been hurt. If there's a doctor present, I'd uh, like him to please step forward. Now, now, please, please. There's nothing to be alarmed about. I'll ask once more, is there a doctor here? No? Well, then I'm sorry, but all guests will remain in the casino for the time being. Now, I repeat, there's no need for alarm. I only ask you to amuse yourselves here in the casino for the next few minutes. All right, Phil, go ahead. Captain McDonald and Steward Harvey Ponds rushed the badly wounded man toward shore in a water taxi. But it was an undertaking establishment where he finally arrived, having died during the trip. The Long Beach police were at once notified, and Lieutenant of Detective C.E. Peterson and Detective Sergeant M.B. Kane were assigned to the case. Peterson's first official act was to telephone to Captain Muller S.K., commander of the United States Coast Guard Station No. 17 at San Pedro. Captain Hayes? Yes? This is Detective Lieutenant Peterson of the Long Beach Police. Oh, yes? There's been some trouble out on the gambling ship Joanna Smith, a shooting... I'd like to have you send a cutter to stand by out there and see that no passengers disembark from the ship until given permission to do so from the proper authorities. Certainly. I'll be glad to cooperate. Thank you, Captain. Special agents from the United States Department of Justice were also notified, and within a short time augmented the forces of the municipal police aboard the gambling vessel. Lawrence, for those government men just pull alongside Peterson. They're coming aboard now. Oh, yes. Thank you, Captain McDonald. We're special agents from the Department of Justice. Who's in charge here? I'm in charge of the investigation. My name is Peterson. Oh, yes, Peterson. They gave us your name when we were sent out. Yeah, this is Captain McDonald. He's master of the Johannes Hi, right. right, Captain. I took a chance when I called you that this case would be in your jurisdiction. That's right. Murder on an American vessel on the high seas interests Uncle Sam, all right. Right up here is where the man's body was found. Any line on who might have killed him? Not yet. I found these five exploded shell cases on the deck. Hmm. Came from a thirty-two, eh? Yes. Yeah. Here, what's this? Where? Embedded in the deck here. Looks like a steel jacketed lead slug. Well, funny I missed that. Yeah, I'll have it out in a second and we'll take a look at it. It's probably a thirty-two bullet, all right. Keep it with the shells, and we'll find out for sure later. What I want to know now is what happened here. Well, I was in the boiler room below, and I heard five shots fired up here. I ran on up and found a young man lying in a pool of blood. Who are you? Uh, my name is Tinsley, sir. I'm the engineer aboard. Mm-hmm. Go on. I asked this fellow who shot him. He couldn't answer. Then Captain McDonald came along. He and Harvey Ponds. Harvey's the steward. They carried the man down to a water taxi. The boy died before we reached the docks. Never regained consciousness. You know who he was? I haven't the least idea. But I know whoever killed him is still on board this ship. How do you know that, Captain? <laughs> because nobody's been permitted to leave. Those are my orders before we took the boy's body to shore. Well, that was using your head. What about the murder gun, Peterson? Did you find it? Not yet. But we took these things off the dead man's body. Here, look them over. Mm-hmm. 32 caliber Colts automatic. Fully loaded, huh? Bloodstained road map. Hey, what's this? That's a Seaman Certificate of Registration. The name's a little hard to make out. Let's see, it looks like Norman Lorraine. Is that how it looks to you? Yes, yes, that's the name, all right. Where did he keep all this stuff? He had it in the inside pocket of his coat, the gun and everything. That's right. The road map was folded over the butt of the automatic. What did the murdered man look like? Young, rather good-looking. I'd say between...
between 20 and 25 years old, six feet tall, had curly black hair. Shot at close range, would you say? I think so. One bullet entered the side of his chest. He caught another in his stomach, and two went into his back. The fifth bullet just grazed him. Well. Uh, about how many guests have you aboard, Captain? 240, as I figure it. How many in the crew? 65, including the waiters, musicians, dealers, and all. So now all we have to do is find out which of 305 people is the one we're looking for. That's right. Well, uh, what do you think we better do first? Oh, I suppose we'll have to start by questioning every one of these people. Mm, what a job. Oh, while we're doing it, we better have a search made of the ship. You know, see if anyone's hiding out somewhere or see if we can't find that gun. Why couldn't one of your special agents take Tinsley here and three or four members of the crew? Or we question the people in the casino. Yeah, that's an idea. Well, the sooner we get started, the sooner we'll find out something. That is, if we're going to find out anything. <laughs> minutes later, the patrons at the casino were segregated in a corner where it was impossible for them to communicate with members of the crew. Then the trying task of questioning was begun. Do you know a young man named Norman Lorraine? No. Did you hear any shots fired? No. Is anyone missing from your party? No. Have you uh, seen anyone acting suspiciously? No. Then began the questioning of the crew. It began to look hopeless that the officers would receive even a shred of information until at last two members of the ship's orchestra were approached. Did you hear any shots fired? Well, uh, yes, at least something that sounded like shots. So did I, officer. Where were you boys when you heard these shots? Well, we were up on the upper deck having a cup of coffee. Yes? What then? Well, we heard this noise and looked out the window. A few seconds later, I saw a man walk past the coffee shop. But neither of you made any effort to find out what had happened? Well, no, sir. We just thought it was some drunk showing off. Can you describe the man you saw? Well, all I know is he had on a snap brim felt hat. A, I think it was a gray one. I think he had on a gray suit, too, but might have been blue or maybe it was brown. Oh, I don't know. that's a big help. Well, it was pretty dark out there, and I only just caught a glimpse of him. Do you think you'd know him again if you saw him? Oh, me? No, I wouldn't know him in a million years. Well, that's just swell. What's the matter, Peterson? I thought I was going to get myself a little information here, but all I get is talk about gray felt hats. Good night, there's 60 men in there with gray felt hats. Tough luck. Here's some more. That search party combed the ship but didn't find a thing. No game, huh? No. Well, it's ten to one. The killer tossed the gun overboard, so I would hardly expect him to find that. Still, he himself must be aboard somewhere. Unless he decided to jump overboard after he shot this fellow and commit suicide. <laughs> Say, look at here, officers. How much longer are you going to keep us here aboard this ship? I'm sorry, but we've got to keep you here a while longer, sir. This is an imposition. Do you realize it's after 2 o'clock in the morning? I have work to do. Oh, I understand that, sir, but I'm helpless to do anything about it for the present. I never heard of such an outrage. I'll sue the ship. That's what I'll do. Yes, by George, I'll sue the ship. Oh, dear. I'm afraid this situation with the guest is going to be a little tough before we're through here. Yeah, I know it is. That isn't going to make things any easier. Uh-oh. Here comes another one. A woman this time. Please. Please, I've simply got to get home, officers. Please, please let me go. I wish I could, lady. I'd like to, but my hands are tied. But you don't understand. You see, well, my husband, he works all night, and if he gets home and finds I'm not there, I... It can't be done. Not yet, anyway. I'm sorry, lady. But, but don't you see... It won't help you to cry, lady. I can't let anyone off this ship. But you've got no right to hold us. We didn't do anything. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to tell him? Tell him you were up with a sick friend. Mm. This business is pretty apt to get a lot more serious. I'm beginning to wish we could catch this killer if only to be able to send these people home. I'll agree with you on that. If we have to hold him many more hours, we'll have to have open mutiny staring us in the face. <laughs> But in spite of the growing impatience and muttered threats of the guests who crowded the ship, the investigators proceeded grimly with the task before them. Names, addresses, and occupations of every person aboard were carefully listed. Finally, at 6 o'clock in the morning, it was decided that 175 men and women who had satisfactorily established their identities should be permitted to leave the ship. From there, by a process of elimination, the group of suspects was at last reduced to seven men. Well, the only thing I can see to do, Peterson, is to go question the seven suspects we're holding and see if we can narrow them down any more. That's about all. Let's see now. What do we got? According to their statements, we're three garage mechanics, uh, an ex-convict, 
A chauffeur, a newspaper reporter, and a seaman. <laughs> Quite a collection. I'm just as certain as I am standing here that one of those seven is the killer. But how are we going to prove it? Yeah, that is a question. They all deny knowing the dead man. No weapons were found on them, no bloodstains on their clothing. Well, not only that, but they all seem to have letters or cards of identification. All but the ex-convict have jobs, and none of them are wearing gray snap-brim hats. Well, let's have one more go at them. The boys have got them in this cabin here. All right, all right you fellas. We're going to give you another chance to talk. Now, once again... Do any of you know Norman Lorraine or know of him? And none of you have got a gun ditched around here? Hey, we've been answering these questions all night. If you don't let us go ashore right away, we're liable to lose our jobs. Hey, aren't you the one who said you were a newspaper man? Yeah. I thought you said you worked on a San Francisco sheet. I do, but that doesn't mean my job keeps me in San Francisco all the time. Why don't you let up on us? What's wrong, son? What are you crying about? Oh, I know what's going to happen. You'll pin this on me. You know, I just got out of the pen a few days ago. So what? Oh, you can't kid me. I know I'm due to be framed for this job. Why do you think that? Nobody's going to pin anything on you you haven't done. Well, if the parole board finds out I'm mixed up in this event, they'll send me back. Oh, uh, just sit tight and quit your blubbering. You haven't been accused of anything yet. Do we go ashore this morning or don't we? Well, keep your shirt on. You newspaper guys are always in a hurry. That's our job. Okay, boys. I'll let you go ashore. But before you go, I'm going to have a complete set of fingerprints from each of you. Huh? You're going to take our prints? Well, sure, why not? You birds have spent half the night telling us how innocent you are, so you oughtn't to mind a little thing like that. Okay, Sergeant Payne. Bring in the ink pad. We're going to collect a few souvenirs. <laughs> Shortly after 8 o'clock, the officers were in possession of the fingerprints they desired, and the last of the gambling ship's guests, including the seven suspects, were aboard a water taxi bound for Long Beach. As one of the special agents stood on the landing platform of the Johanna Smith, depressed by his failure to apprehend the killer, the voice of one of the passengers floated back to him from the passenger steering boat. Hey, I saw someone pick up a gun in the lounge a minute ago. You what? A gun. Someone picked up a gun in the lounge. Peterson, did you hear that? About a gun, wasn't it? Hey, bring that launch about. Bring those people back here to the ship. They'll never hear you. Not with the fog and noise of the motor and all. Quick, we got to get those people back here. Hey, there's another launch down there. In fact, the speedboat. Go ahead them off and get them back here. Right. I'll have that launch back here in no time. Where's Peterson going, sir? After that boatload of people had just left, Sergeant. Someone yelled up to me that a gun had been found. A gun? Yeah. Let's go see what we can find out. There's a ship's watchman just going into the casino. Maybe he knows something. We'll ask him. Say... Hey, just a minute there. Hey, what's that? Just a minute. Hey, yes, sir, yes. Did anyone find a gun? No, nobody ain't having the fun. I say, did anyone find a gun on board during the last few minutes? Oh, a gun. Let me see. Yes, I believe Abadabba found a gun. But it was too small to be the one you officers are looking for. Who's Abadabba? He's the boat black. Yeah. Everybody calls him Abadabba. Yeah, but it's just, it's just a nickname. Why didn't you report this right away? Well, it's not the gun you're looking for, mister. It's just a little old uh, 32. A 32? Yeah. Get Abba Dabba here right away. Yeah. And I want you to call me. If you're Abba Dabba, you sure did. What's this about your finding a gun? Nothing. I was just found one, that's all. Where'd you find it? In the mass smoking room. Why didn't you bring it to one of the officers? Well, like this, uh, I don't show it to Watchman here. He pulled the trigger and take out the clip. Then they say, Abba Dabba, just gonna eat much time. If you want, you can keep it. How'd you have to find it? Oh, oh sir, I, all you know, I've been finding bottles hidden in the lounge. I, I've been drinking a little out of each bottle. That's why I feel the way I feel now. So I see. Well, what about this gun? Well, I just let find one of them big ass things and I'll find this your gun. Well, where is it now? In that drawer where my shoe shine stuff is. Take a look at that, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Here it is, sir. Let's have a look at it. Uh-huh. 32 caliber Mauser automatic. It's been fired recently, too. Can I check it for fingerprint? Yeah, and right away. Yes, sir. You're sure you two fellas aren't shielding somebody? Some member of the crew who might have pulled this killing? No, sir, no. No, I never saw the gun until after they ever showed it to me. I don't know a thing about it. Oh, I wouldn't shield nobody. Not even my own self. I'd be too scared. 
just like I told you. Well, this looks kind of funny to me. Well, don't look funny to me, sir. It'll look gruesome, powerful gruesome. Kill us some I don't want no truck with. Well, how's the gun look for print, Sergeant? Looks like we're out of luck, sir. Guns been handled by too many people since the crime was committed. Uh, I headed off the launch without any trouble, sir. The people are coming aboard now. But they're pretty hot under the collar. Well, that can't be helped, Peterson. You'd better bring those seven suspects in here. I should worry about the rest. Okay. All right, boys. Send in the lads we printed. Okay. And we might add these two to the seven, for the time being, anyway. Uh, who are they? The watchman and the boot black. I don't want to be out of nothing, sir. I just want to go home. Give me some sleep. Hey, when do you cops got to finish with this monkey business? I've had about enough of it. You'll take it and like it. And that tone isn't going to do you any good either. I thought you fellas were going to let us go. Well, we are, if you've got the right answers to some questions. But they better be the right ones. I knew you guys would bring me back here and hang this on me. Hey, you seem to be dead set on getting stuck with this murder, don't you? What's the matter, your conscience? No, but I know how these things work out. If a guy's ever done a stretch, ain't they trying to... Wait a minute, officer. Let me talk. Oh, the newspaper reporter again, huh? Well, what is it? I'm the man you're looking for. You're what? I say, I'm the man you're looking for. Oh, yeah? And what kind of a gun did you shoot Lorraine with? A mouse. What did you do with it after the shooting? I kept it quite a while, then hid it back to one of those stand-filled ash stands in the lounge. That was just before I was searched. What made you want to confess all of a sudden? Yeah, just to beat you to it, that's all. You'd have got me by my prints. I knew the jig was up as soon as I heard the gun had been found. Are you willing to make a full statement? Sure. Why not? Here, take a look at this. Is this the gun you shot him with? Yeah, yeah. This is my gun. All right, then. Clear these other suspects out of here. We'll listen to what this fellow has to say. You told us your name was Sullivan. Was that right? No. It's Walsh. James J. Walsh. Where did you first meet Lorraine, the man you shot? We were cellmates at Leavenworth Penitentiary. Oh. Will you show us exactly how you committed this murder? Sure. We were walking along like this, see? There'd, uh, there'd been an argument. Suddenly we stopped walking and I let him have it. Like this. Mm-hmm. Cute. How long have you been out of the pen, Walt? Since last March. Lorraine got out a few months later. And the two of you got together again, is that it? Yeah, yeah. We, we met in San Francisco. What did you do there? Eh, nothing much. Worked at a few jobs. Then we went to Sacramento. What then? Eh, then on to Stockton, San Jose. Did you do any work at any of these last places? No. No, we, uh, we looked for jobs, but we didn't find any. Yeah. Where'd you buy your gun? I bought mine in Sacramento. Lorraine got a thirty-two automatic in San Jose. Why did you buy these guns? Yeah, make a living with, I guess. Did you commit any robberies? No. No, we were we were waiting for something good. When did you come to Long Beach? Last Monday. Well, how'd the two of you happen to come out here at the Joanna Smith? Yeah, I don't know. We've been drinking and quarreling most of yesterday afternoon, and I... What were you quarreling about? Well, we've been, we've been working on a plan to kidnap a big shot oil man, but we couldn't seem to agree on some of the details... I don't want any part of this bumping off stuff. Kidnapping's one thing. Murder's, you know, murder's another. Yeah? Well, look. Every time somebody kidnaps a guy and then brings him back safe and healthy, that guy gets caught. Not for me. I like the old saying. Dead men tell no tales. Sometimes I don't think you're human. That's no attitude to take. Even animals have got more heart than that. Ah, you're dopey. Listen, I'll stick with you on any job just so long as you don't knock off an innocent guy. But if you ever do so, help me, I'll turn you in. You're too soft for your own good. I suppose you'd squeal if I killed a cop, even. No, 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 that's different. Well, if you want to know, I'd just as soon kill you as anybody. And it wouldn't bother my conscience any, because as far as I'm concerned, you're just a rat. Okay, okay. Let's not say any more about it. After the two of you got out here to the ship, the argument continued, eh? Yeah, yeah, I was, uh, I was still talking about my code of kill or be killed. He sort of seemed to be uh, afraid of me. What made you feel he was afraid of you, Walt? I don't know exactly. I, but uh, while we were walking on the upper deck, he, he acted afraid. Stopped several times. Did he ever make a move toward his gun? Well, he unbuttoned his coat. The gun was in his inside pocket. 
But he never actually reached for it. Yeah, I have to admit it, he did. We'd stopped walking by this time. Both of us seemed to sense a showdown. Neither of us said nothing. What happened then? Well, then he started to reach in his inside pocket. I, I guess he knew I was mad enough to kill him. So I pulled out my gun and released the safety. Only meant to bluff him and, and to give up his gun. Yeah, but instead you shot him. Sure. You see, he kept on going after his gun. I think the first bullet hit him in the stomach because he lurched forward and moaned. And you kept on firing at him? I figured I'd better put him out of his misery. So I emptied my gun into him. Did Lorraine ever draw his gun clear of his pocket? I can't say for sure, but I think he did. Did you actually see Lorraine draw his gun? I think so. That was before I started shooting. Yeah, did Lorraine shoot? No. Then how do you explain the fact that when Lorraine was found after the shooting, his gun was still in his inside pocket? I suppose he let go of the gun after the first bullet hit him and it fell back in. After shooting Lorraine, what did you do? Well, first, I threw my hat overboard. Then I just walked around, mingled with the crowd. How far away from him were you when you started firing? Ah, about five feet. Have you anything further to add to this statement? Only that when I killed Lorraine, I felt that it was either his life or mine. When the statement which James J. Walsh made to the officers had been transcribed, he read and signed it. However, just before the case went to trial, Detective Lieutenant Peterson and the special agent in charge of the government's case against the killer confronted him once more in his jail cell. Hello, Walsh. We just thought we'd drop in for a little talk. What about? Your trial's coming up in a few days. I just suppose I know it. Hey, we just wondered if you felt the same way about that confession. You hadn't thought of repudiating it in court, had you? No. Why? That's good. Because it'd be just a waste of time and cost the government a lot of money. How do you mean? Well, you see, it's been definitely proved that the bullets that killed Lorraine were fired from the gun you bought in Sacramento. Yeah? Yeah. Besides that, the man who sold it to you has positively identified you from photographs. So what? You guys had me nailed dead to rights? Right from the first place, didn't you? No, Walt. I'm afraid we didn't. What do you mean? You had my prints on the gun. What else could I do but confess? No. We didn't have your prints on the gun. So many people had handled it after you did that it was all covered with smears. Not a print of any description. What are you guys trying to tell me? Thought I could have got away with it if I kept my mouth shut? You never could have gotten away with it, Walsh. We'd have found you out in the long run, but you sure saved us a lot of trouble. Well, I'll be hanged. You're telling me. moment, we shall hear the concluding facts regarding tonight's story. Friends, it pays to use no gasoline but the best in your motor. All-purpose Rio Grande cracked gasoline is the first in public service. The most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. For more power, more mileage, smoother performance. Fill up with this new all-purpose Rio Grande. If you haven't done so, try it tomorrow. federal court before Judge Harry Holt. Psychiatrists found him sane, but of such criminal tendencies as to be dangerous to society. He was found guilty and sentenced to spend the remainder of his life contemplating the truth that crime cannot pay. Sheriff's office calling all cars. Attention all cars. A cancellation broadcast 297 regarding a murder. Suspect in this case is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Cliff.
Cedric Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. <laughs> week at this time, Rio Grande will present The Case of the Missing Guns. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.